When it comes to diagnosing and repairing old computers, there are a number of standard tools that should be in anyone's arsenal. One of the most useful ones is the postcard. No, that's not the kind of postcard that your nan sends you from Brighton. Postcard here stands for Power On Self Test, and it is the set of routines any PC goes through when it is first turned on, both to configure its hardware and test that everything is working right. Ever since the PCAT, the IBM 5170, the BIOS has included a debug facility which reports what it is doing in the form of an 8-bit number. You can think of it as an I have reached this point in my startup sequence indication and this can be used to work out why a computer isn't booting properly during the period before any display has been initialised. But normally you cannot get at that diagnostic number, and that is where the postcard comes in. This is one of the more common postcards available on the market. I bought this one through Amazon, but you can get the same card from many different online marketplaces. There are other designs too, with less or more facilities, but this is the type you'll most commonly see being used. It is a universal postcard in that it contains both an 8-bit ISA connector and a PCI connector, so it can be used with a wider range of vintage computers. While there are some postcards available with PCIe connections, these seldom work, as many modern motherboards don't broadcast the diagnostic codes through PCIe. However, some motherboards, especially high-end gaming motherboards, contain a small display of their own which shows similar diagnostic information. Installing the postcard is as simple as slotting it into your chosen slot type. Getting the correct orientation is important though, especially on the ISA slots as there is no key to force the orientation and no backplate to align with the case. For the ISA connector there is a small arrow with rear written next to it which should point to the rear of the computer's case. There is a small arrow by the PCI connector but this should be ignored as it actually appears to point to the front of the case on this card. But for PCI there is a key, which means you can only install it in one orientation. Speaking of the PCI connector, it's worth noting that this variant of the card has shaved a few cents off the cost by making the PCI connector a fraction shorter than it should be and missing out a few pins. The PCI slot key means you can't misalign it though. As a general rule of thumb, ISA cards are installed with their components facing upwards when oriented in a standard tower system, and PCI cards with their components facing down, which should help you to orient the card a little easier. The card also contains a small piezoelectric transducer, which can be connected to the motherboard's speaker connection through these jumpers here. This is useful as the motherboard can produce beep codes to indicate a problem, and if you are testing a board on the workbench without the speaker that is normally provided by a case, this can save you hunting for a spare speaker to connect up. You get two dual seven-segment displays for indicating both the current postcode and the previous postcode. As the postcode changes, the number that is currently being displayed will be moved across from the left hand to the right hand display. This can be good to know not only what the current phase of operation is, but also the previous phase that led up to the problem. Some people find this extra information distracting though, and tape over the right hand display so it only shows the current postcode. Alongside the displays there is also a bank of LEDs. These indicate the state of the power supply rails on the bus, and also a few useful signals. The most useful of these is the reset signal. Often when diagnosing motherboards that have had battery corrosion or similar issues, the system may fail to come out of reset mode, and a quick glance at this LED can indicate this issue without having to resort to an oscilloscope. Different BIOS manufacturers have different ways of imparting their post-sequence information, so the board comes with a handy little manual with all the postcodes of the more common BIOS manufacturers listed. I have scanned this and uploaded it to archive.org, as it is useful to have all the common BIOS codes together in one place. The postcodes are communicated to the card through IO port 80 hex. Any value written to this IO port immediately gets displayed on the card. 
This means we can write ourselves a very tiny assembly language program to display our own numbers on the card for fun. I'll use debug on a DOS computer for this. The program is very simple. First we need to load the number we want to display into the accumulator. Then we output the contents of the accumulator through port 80. Finally, we trigger interrupt 21, which tells the operating system the program is finished. When we run the program, the display instantly changes to the number we requested. To expand on this, I have written a small C program in Ball and C++ for DOS, which accepts a four-digit hexadecimal value and splits it into two parts, outputting each part in turn. This lets us display any four-digit hexadecimal value on the display that we like, with a few exceptions. Because the left-hand value only moves across to the right-hand display when the number actually changes, not when a number is written to the output port, both halves of the four-digit value have to be different. This program has been uploaded to GitHub if you want to play with it. The link is in the description below. So I hope you have enjoyed this little dive into the postcard for diagnosing older PC motherboards. If you want to see more content like this, you might like to subscribe. I also live stream various retro tech topics and tinkerings on Twitch. If you'd like to support the channel more, you can subscribe on Patreon, which will give you early access to my videos as well as being part of the inner circle of my supporters.